<laughs> in Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather Part 2, we follow Don Michael Corleone as he looks to legitimise the Corleone crime family and expand his empire after the events of the first film, having dispatched the heads of the five New York Dons and handed over control of the Corleone crime family to Peter Clemenza, and later Frank Pintangeli after Clemenza's death. In the beginning of the second film, we see that Michael Corleone is reinventing his image, with Michael being visited by numerous guests to a party in celebration of his son's communion, where he deals with various business and family issues, similar to the wedding scene in the beginning of the first film where Don Vito Corleone is visited by people looking for favours and help with issues they have, which require illegitimate methods to solve. Michael meets with the likes of the corrupt Senator Pat Geary in order to discuss the cost of gaming licenses for hotels and casinos that the Corleones are buying. Geary attempts to make the transition as difficult as possible for Michael due to his contempt for Italian Americans. Michael also has a promising meeting with Johnny Ola, the right hand man of Jewish gangster and Corleone business partner Hyman Roth with Ola telling Michael that Roth will go with Michael's plan to move in to certain casinos. Frank Pentangeli is also looking to meet Michael, but he is kept in a queue, his issues being delayed, and when he is received by Michael, his issues being the Rosato brothers, gangsters in New York who are backed by Hyman Roth, Michael refuses to help Frank fight the Rosato brothers and instead tells him to make peace, as instability between Frank and the Risotto brothers could affect a deal with Roth that Michael is in the middle of. Frank is drunk, rude and disrespectful towards his Don, with Michael having to remind him that his family's name is Corleone, and he is to run it like a Corleone. Later that evening, two assassins fire a flurry of bullets into Michael's bedroom while he and his wife plan to sleep, and Michael subsequently leaves to find out who tried to have him killed, and also work out who within the family betrayed him. Michael leaves Tom in charge, the one man he can fully trust, seeing as though Tom was only in the loop with certain business dealings. For example, Michael tells Johnny Ola that Tom will not be sitting during their meeting, a polite way of telling Tom to leave, who looks a bit resentful, but as Michael later tells him, he did this to protect Tom and ensure he could trust him, as by leaving Tom out, no one could approach Tom to betray Michael. That traitor could be anyone, Rocco Lampone, Al Neri, but ultimately it is revealed through his own stupidity that Fredo Corleone, elder brother of Michael and technically the underboss of the Corleone crime family, worked with Johnny Ola and betrayed Michael, and ultimately the mastermind behind the assassination attempt is Hyman Roth. When Michael meets with Roth after the assassination attempt, he tells Hyman that it was Frank Pentangeli who tried to have him killed, and that he will deal with Frank. But then when he meets with Frank, he tells him that it was Roth who sanctioned the hit, but he will play along for now as if nothing has happened. As he puts it, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Michael's thought process throughout this entire endeavour is shrouded in mystery, and many questions arise. Did Michael always know that it was Roth who tried to have him killed from the beginning, or was it something he gradually worked out? Did he realise by the time he met with Pentangeli, or was he still unsure at that point? Was the investigation more to work out who the traitor within the family was, as opposed to the man behind the assassination attempt? There are many questions, and the one I wanted to focus on today is how exactly did Michael come to realise that Hyman Roth was behind the assassination attempt? Of course, there is the classic scene where Hyman, lying on the sofa, sick and tired, gets up and confronts Michael after Michael asks who had Pentangeli killed. Roth makes a big speech about having a protege called Mo Green who he loved and who was killed, and as we know, Michael had Mo Green killed in the first film. Here, Roth essentially lays all bare, it's the only time in the film where he becomes emotional and the facade is lifted, and we finally have confirmation that Roth was indeed behind the hit. But the film implies that Michael had already worked this out before this scene takes place, hence him confronting Roth about Pentangeli in the first place. So let's examine the evidence and work out just how Michael knew it was Roth all along. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button for more videos. You can also support the channel and receive exclusive videos and early access by becoming a channel member. Now, before we really dig deep into the evidence available, 
A man as intelligent and as cunning as Michael could deduce who was behind the hit simply through the power of deduction. I believe that Michael was almost certain that it was Roth who tried to have him killed just after the assassination attempt occurred. That was almost a certainty. The actual questions he had were A. Why Roth wanted him dead and B. Who within the family helped? And even then, I think, even subconsciously, he always suspected Fredo, even though Tom Hagen was the one person who was actually ruled out. But sticking with who was behind the hit, the film establishes four antagonists for Michael in the beginning of the film, based on the four visits he gets. And as Michael tells Tom, think as people around you think. So let's think as these four visitors and discuss who actually has anything to gain if Michael dies. The first is Senator Pat Gary. A man who accepts people like Michael are here to stay, but he loathes them and intends to squeeze as much money out of them as possible. But could Geary have been responsible for the hit? Of course not. He may act like a big shot, but to borrow a line from Hyman Roth, he's small potatoes, and it doesn't take much for Geary to end up in the Corleone's pocket. Geary would have no real motivation, no real connections, no real power to do such a thing, and he shows Michael all of his cards during their meeting his confidence and sense of superiority a massive weakness. Another visitor was Connie, Michael's sister who resented him for kidding her husband. And I'm not going to waste your time going through reasons Michael could strike her off his list. At that point, Connie was just a compulsively spending bimbo who wasn't even around the family enough to plan Michael's murder. The third suspect is Pentangeli. And given his meeting with Michael, he would be our main suspect. And it's likely viewers of the film were shocked the first time Michael told Frank that it was actually Roth who planned the hit, who at that point I'm sure many people didn't even suspect. Frank Pentangeli is clearly the one who orchestrated the hit. He was angry with Michael for not helping the family in the fight against the Rosato brothers. He felt that Michael had abandoned his people, suggesting he spends time drinking champagne high up in the Sierra mountains. He is deliberately insulted by Michael by having to wait to see him. Michael is impeding on Frank's family's safety and business, and while he is talking to Michael, he gets up and talks to Tom mid-conversation, much like how Fredo did in the first film during the Mo Green sit-down, which could be a deliberate red herring with the film pseudo-foreshadowing Frank's betrayal. Frank is loud, brash, drunk, and it is easy to imagine him becoming frustrated and using whatever connections he has in Michael's inner circles to get someone to take Michael out. He literally says to Michael, pointing accusingly, I want to run my family without you on my back. So why doesn't Michael take out Frank straight away without contemplating that there might be other suspects? Well, for one, Frank has been loyal to the family for decades, though that doesn't really count for much because so was Tessio. But at the heart of the matter in the meeting between Frank and Michael, Michael knows Frank is right. Michael has prioritised the deal with Roth, but he knows the Rosato brothers are being too bold. He isn't outright dismissing Frank, essentially he's telling him to wait, but without giving too much away. Michael knows Frank has been put in the middle of a situation that he, Michael, can put a stop to, so naturally Frank is angry. He disagrees with Michael, but ultimately they are on the same side, fighting for the same team, the Corleones. What does Frank actually gain from killing Michael? Now he'd be left alone to fight both the Rosatos and Roth, and on top of being hunted as revenge for Michael's death. He would be shooting himself in the foot by killing Michael, and considering he was getting squeezed in New York, he didn't have the muscle to do so anyway. Plus, it wasn't Pentangeli's style. If he was going to do Michael, it would be in the streets, not in Michael's bedroom with his wife there and possibly his children, which under Sicilian mafia code would have been considered an infamnia. And it wouldn't be while he lived in Michael's childhood home with his family name bearing that of Michael's. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but it's worth noting that Pentangeli's character was originally Clemenza. And as we know, Clemenza disrespected Michael. He questioned his orders. He was emotional and loud, but he never betrayed the family like Tessio and remained loyal instead. Also, Frank was drunk during his confrontation with Michael, but when Michael comes to visit him in his home, his demeanour is very different. It's much more subservient and compliant, meaning the Frank we saw at the beginning of the film might not be the way he usually acts in front of Michael. And during his drunken tirade, 
He points out the crimes of the Rosato brothers, such as committing violence in their mother's neighbourhoods. His old school principles are on full display, the very same principles that Michael appeals to when he brings Frank's brother to the Senate hearings later in the film, which I've discussed in great detail in another video. Not to mention he showcased his loyalty by swallowing his pride and going to make peace with the Rosato brothers, only to be double-crossed. Not only that, but when Michael visits Frank and tells him to make peace, Frank again fights for his case, which showcases his honesty. If he was behind the hit, he would have gone along with whatever Michael said straight away to reduce suspicion against him. It's after this that Michael is shown to ease up in the scene and relax more, as if he is now certain that Frank didn't try to have him killed. So there really is only one man left, Hyman Roth. He has the money to buy people, he has power on another level to Pantangeli, but what he didn't have at that point, in Michael's eyes, was a clear motive. Why would Roth want Michael dead? The two were going into the casino business together. There was potential for business rivalry, but as the meeting with Ola showed, Roth allowed Michael to take a cut of the casinos with his blessing. This is perhaps why Michael waits for so long before trying to kill Roth, if indeed he did know at that point that Roth was behind the hit. He knew Roth was the only one daring to do what he did, he knew he was the only one with the power, but he didn't know why. There are subtle clues that imply Roth's hand in the assassination attempt, such as when he refers to Pentangeli as small potatoes after Michael saying he will die. The dismissiveness of the remark seemingly does not go unnoticed by Michael. This man just tried to murder Don Michael Corleone, and his small potatoes? That was the most important topic of the day, and Roth dismissed it as if he wanted not to dwell on that particular subject. Not to mention, Roth was clever enough to realise suspecting Frank Pentangeli was not a clever decision, because of the reasons already mentioned, but he would have been relieved that Michael was fixated on Pentangeli being behind the hit, so was happy to leave it at that. Michael saw that Roth had no objection about Michael taking out one of his loyal capos, which would damage the Corleone Empire, rather than advise Michael that he's probably got it wrong about Pentangeli. There's also the fact that Johnny Ola gives Michael an orange when he comes to visit him, though of course this doesn't work in-universe, that's more of a clue for us, the viewers. It's likely Michael heavily suspected Roth, and after they met, he was certain, with the only matters remaining just why Roth wanted him out and who helped him. Michael offered him a suspect of the assassination attempt, and Roth took it straight away, but what he actually took was Michael's bait. Even Roth's house is a hint. The man is insanely rich but lives in a modest home. In other words, he hides his true wealth. It's his nature to keep things close to the chest and play the humble old man. So, what else is he hiding? It's also worth noting that during Fredo's confession, he says that Ola told him that Michael was being tough on the negotiations. So, there was clearly dealings going on between Roth and Michael where Michael may have been frustrating Roth, and it may be that the reason for Roth wanting Michael dead was a combination of several. Jealousy at this young successful businessman going up in the world, growing resentment and hatred at the murder of Mo Green, but also things like negotiation issues, which may have been the straw that broke the camel's back and caused Roth to go and try to murder Michael. So before the famous confrontation between Roth and Michael, the Don already would have some reason why Roth might want him dead. If Michael were to think like his enemy, he no doubt would see that Roth's plan was a brilliant one. Manipulate Fredo's insecurities to get his help in killing Michael, whether he knew it was a hit or not, that's a video for another day. And after Michael is gone, Fredo takes over as a puppet Don. Roth now controls the Corleone family through Fredo, not to mention he'll have the Rosato brothers chew out Pentangeli on the streets to swallow the entire Corleone family up. Roth craves more power, and as Michael says, he thinks he's gonna live forever. We might ponder what such an old man, already so rich and powerful, could gain from wanting even more materialism, but there are enough real life examples to show us that people like this really exist. Of course, another reason Michael was sure Roth was behind the hit comes at the same time he is certain Fredo was involved. When Fredo denies knowing Roth and Ola, but during the show everyone is watching makes it clear he does know them. 
We all know this is where Michael is now without a shadow of a doubt that his brother was involved, but it's easy to forget because of the power of the scene that it also confirms Michael's suspicions about Roth. All is of course laid bare during Roth's speech. The Rosato brothers are attacking Coley on turf because they thought they were promised areas by Clemenza, so they had genuine grievances. But now Pentangeli has been murdered, supposedly, after Michael specifically told Roth that he would kill him, but he didn't have Pentangeli killed. So someone gave the order, and Roth was the only man who Michael told he would kill Pentangeli. So now all is but confirmed. So he confronts Roth, who is visibly thrown by Michael's question, avoiding his gaze when he answers the Rosato brothers, and looking like he needs to find his bearings for the first time in the film, looking like he's been caught off guard. The looks exchanged with Ola point out that Roth knows he's been rumbled. Then his persona as a mentor or father figure to Michael disappears, the facade of the wise old man, as he reveals his anger at the murder of Mo Green. By the way, this is interesting because Lee Strasberg, who played Roth, actually was an acting mentor to Al Pacino. And also, Roth trying to kill Michael is yet another betrayal on top of Fredo and Kay that Michael has to face in this film. Anyway, Michael finally has the reason why Roth wanted him dead. Everything is out in the open now, hence Michael sanctioning Roth's death shortly after. Now, there's actually multiple ways to interpret Roth's speech. He says he wasn't angry at the death of Moe Green, but clearly he was. Clearly, like so many men in the Godfather films, he mixes what's business and what's personal. When he says, I didn't ask who gave the order, which is what Michael did, and this is the business we've chosen, it could be seen as him saying, you took out one of mine with Moe Green, I took out one of yours with Pentangeli. Now let it go, don't take the moral high ground, let's move on and do business. Which does bring up another question, which is whether Roth still intended to have Michael killed after this, which I guess is debatable, but I think the consensus is that somewhere down the line, he would. In fact, he was probably waiting for another opportunity all this time, waiting for Michael to lower his guard after the first assassination attempt, waiting for him to put his two million in for the deal, put in his connections, and once the deal is done, take him out. And again... Roth's true intentions are suggested when he gets a bit emotional at Michael not bringing the money, and him later knowing that Fredo has bought the money, suggesting he's been spying on Michael, and now that the money is in Cuba, Michael isn't needed, and another assassination attempt on him could be imminent. In reality, Roth talking about Michael putting his briefcase on the table with the two million dollars would have been all part of the ruse. Roth would have never let the murder of Green go, he was clearly still emotional about it, and somewhere down the line he would have gone after Michael again. Perhaps the two million wasn't even important to a man as rich as Roth. After all, why did he then try to have Michael killed before the Cuban deal? Perhaps the answer to this lies in the fact that Roth is based on the real-life kingpin Maya Lansky, who is thought to have gone broke after Fidel Castro kicked out the mobsters from the Cuban casinos. So maybe Roth suspected the Cuban dream project would fail, and what he actually wanted was Michael's business. Perhaps there is a potential further layer to this scene, that though Roth was angry about Mo Green, he was using Green as a smokescreen in order to feign that he and Michael were now even. Roth was actually in a sticky situation. He had money invested in the Cuban casinos, but like Michael, knew that revolution could be imminent, and if that happens, much of his wealth would disappear. Therefore, he needed a contingency, and that contingency could be taking over the Corleone Empire. After Michael tries to kill Roth and makes his intentions clear, Roth changes tactics and tries to end Michael a different way, namely the committee hearings with Pentangeli testifying against Michael. On a semi-related note to this video, it's interesting that in a deleted scene, we are shown that it was Clemenza who introduces Hyman Roth to Vito Corleone. I just thought that was interesting to mention, seeing as though Pentangeli was originally Clemenza, so the man who he introduced to Vito would eventually refer to him as Small Potatoes and set him up for murder. For more videos, consider subscribing to the channel, and thanks for watching.